In this video, we'll be looking at how to analyze airflow in detail within the IES VE. We're starting with a simple classroom model. If we go down to component level, we can see that we have a number of desks within the space. If we return to the top level, we can see that we have got two windows to the front, both of which have got opening sections at the bottom, while the larger section at the top is a fixed pane that doesn't open. We also have three roof ventilation terminals to improve the ventilation to the space. Everything has already been set in Apache for the occupancy and internal gains. We've also set up the opening windows. We've got different training resources explaining how you can do this. Let's quickly run a simulation using links to both Suncast and Macroflow. We need to go into the Output Options and check that we have ticked the option to generate the outputs required by Macroflow and that this is set for our space before we run the simulation. When the simulation is complete, we'll click on View Results or we can manually switch to Vista Pro to see our example file results. We're now going to use Macroflow arrows to check that there is airflow from the natural ventilation within this space. If we select a suitable time and date, we can see that the air is flowing in through our opening windows and circulating through the roof ventilators. We note this time and date. Now, we want to use the menu for Vista Pro export boundary conditions to export these results, including the airflow and temperatures, etc., so that we can investigate further. We use this dialog to set the date and time, which we've just checked, and to set the period over which the results are being read and averaged. Then, we give our export file a name so that we can find it later to use it as a boundary condition file within Microflow, and we click on OK. This action doesn't give us a prompt that the file has been created, so we don't need to wait, we just move into Microflow. Once we're in Microflow, we select the space and then we move down to space level, as we can't perform this analysis at the top level. We click on the icon to import boundary data and complete the dialog by selecting which boundary condition file we want to import. We'll use the example file that we just created and we'll tick the box to import opening flows and to import room gains. Finally, because we're importing opening flows, we also need to select the opening position. Our example has a top hung window, so we select the bottom opening position and then we click on OK. This will create all of the boundary conditions for us. Once we've imported the boundary conditions, we can verify them by moving down a level in our model, where we can see that the supply and temperature have been assigned to the model boundaries. This has all been brought from our Apache model by importing the boundary conditions. Now, we click on the CFD settings button to set the default grid spacing, the lion merge tolerance, what turbulence we want to run, the default surface and window temperatures, and the initial conditions. Now we're ready to click on the button to run our CFD calculations. This opens up the CFD grid statistics, including the grid and the total number of cells. It's handy to check that the memory required is not too high. This is linked to the size of the model. It also shows the maximum aspect ratio, which shouldn't be too high, as this may cause instabilities and the calculation may fail. This should have a green tick. We click on OK and the grid will be generated, and then the microflow monitor will open. We can see the number of iterations. This model is starting at 500, 
but it varies by model. We'll keep the current selection for the turbulence model and the variables. On the left-hand side, we can see the different components that we may be tracking, such as velocity, temperature, and mass. We choose which ones we want to include, and then we click on Run. If we look at a speeded up view, we can see that the calculations start to run through the different iterations, and we're looking for the lines to start to come down and to converge. We're aiming for a convergence to occur in the region of the eta negative 5 region. When the 500 iterations are complete, we can see that they have started to converge. If they were still far apart, we could increase the number of iterations to allow convergence to happen. Once we see the run completed notification, we can close this dialog. Now that we've run the calculations, the Microflow Viewer button has become active. This opens up a tool which lets us visualize the space in 3D. We can zoom in or out, pan, or move the model to select our view. We'll mostly use the tools down the left, which include settings such as the velocity key and the velocity vector. We'll select these and then scroll through the model grid points to visualize the air movement in the space as a slice at that point. For this example, we can see the airflow through the opening panes of the windows and through the roof terminals. We can also see the cool airflow from the windows moving along the floor, so we can visually gather quite a lot of information. If it's hard to see the data on our model, it may be clearer on a different plane. We can switch between the X, Y and Z planes by selecting these tabs. If we want to, we can also tick certain slices so that they remain visible, and we can set the view to compare different regions of the model. Once selected, we can click on any slices to remove them individually, or we can use the button to remove all slices from the display to quickly clear all that we had selected. The button for display settings lets us access various controls. We can alter the appearance of the contours. For example, we could remove the slower velocity contours from our view if we wanted to, and then view by velocity contour rather than vector, where these slower velocities wouldn't show. But we can turn them back on again to quickly view all of the contours. Another option, rather than viewing the contour lines, is to visualize with filled velocity contours. This shows a solid color across the entire slice on whichever grid plane we choose to select. We can also choose to look at variables other than velocity, such as temperature, to visualize the spread of temperature ranges in the space, or pressure, which doesn't vary much in this example. And we can choose an appropriate key for the metric that we're viewing. We could also view the local mean air age to check if air quality varies significantly across the space or the local air change effectiveness. So far, we've viewed the results as slices, but we can also view 3D meshes. The Temperature Surfaces button lets us visualize where the temperature changes occur across the entire volume of the space. If we turn on the temperature key, we can see how each colored mesh correlates with the temperature band in the key. We can also view the velocity surfaces in the same way. This clearly shows that most of the air in the space is at a fairly constant velocity, with pockets of higher velocity air. We've got similar options to visualize the pressure surfaces, H2O surfaces, and CO2 surfaces, along with the local mean air age where we can see which air is of a higher quality. This shows a clear difference between the two sides of our example space. In this video, we looked at how to export boundary conditions from a dynamic simulation to apply to a CFD model, where we can visualize the results displayed on our VE model. For further hints and tips, please check out our other Tech Tips videos. Thanks for watching.